Aloha, this is Carol Mon Lee, and I'm here to help you, to welcome you to our newest show called The Millennial Mind. And I am not a millennial, and I am not your permanent host, but I am here to interview our guest today, Nicole Alexandra Enos, who is both, she wears many hats. She is a millennial. Ah. <laughs> She's an intern for Think Tech this spring semester. She's a junior, a freshman, sorry, at HPU, yeah. and has many, many interests. So welcome, Nicole. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Great. And Nicole is going to actually be hosting this show during the entire month of April, so four Wednesdays in a row, so stay tuned for her show. And uh, as a millennial, she'll have a lot to offer. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Nicole. Uh, Where were you? Are you from Hawaii? Right. So I'm from Hawaii. I'm from here. I'm from the south side of a beach. Yes. Of a beach! I'm and sorry. You, I to, I have to, I had to do it, but yeah. <laughs> and now you're a freshman at HPU, and what are you studying at HPU? So my major is integrated multimedia. I just switched over from biology, so still in the introductory classes, and I'm taking a minor in computer science. Mm -hmm. And no, the millennials are very, um, it's hard to define, I guess, a millennial, and just in general for our public, uh, I understand millennials are those people born between approximately 1980 and 2000 yeah. typically are children of baby boomers, which I understand. Your mom is a baby boomer. Right. So, um, but in terms of their interest, as you, you know, indicated with your major in media, that is a very strong background and uh, interest for the millennials. And so tell us how you got involved in media and, and what interests you in it. Well, Throughout high school and pretty much my whole life, I've been mostly STEM oriented, very pushed by the parents. And a lot of parents for millennials, especially for immigrants, they try to push that, um, that direction towards STEM. So and in high school, you did a lot of science. And, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what I thought I wanted to do. But I guess like realizing that communication is very much the way we progress and without it there wouldn't be progression there wouldn't be logs of what we've done that will allow us to increase what we're able to do and when I think of STEM in like compared to media and communications it's like it's very interesting to see how much you can do with like the human body and like how we're composed but you can't really take like from a biology major you can't look at someone's cells and figure out like how does it feel to be them or how does it feel to have those cells and to be constructed in that way? It's more of a communications thing. And how I got interested in media is that it's pretty much the vessel for that communication and how everything in, in science and in um, health, how they're getting all this new equipment that like humans can live so much longer. And in terms of how we communicate and how we can interact with each other, media is like all that new equipment, all that medical stuff, but for us, as people. I see. So are you going to combine your background interest in science, biology in particular, with media in the future, do you think? I think just science in general, it, it's very hard to avoid. To avoid? Yeah. It's, it's in everything. So as we increase the amount of things we're capable of doing with media, everything will overlap in one way or another. And so as uh, integrated multimedia at HPU, what is the integrated for? What are you integrating? Um, so there's two multimedia programs or media programs at HPU. One is more focused on production, so like studios, broadcasting, and then integrated multimedia is more focused on design and like web stuff. I see, and you're doing the integrated multimedia. Yeah. But interestingly, you're here on the production side as an intern for ThinkTech. Nothing hurts. like more information or more Absolutely. knowledge. Absolutely. So. so tell us how you got this this internship. I think it's the public would like to hear how that happened. So I had four hours between my work and my next class, and I was sleeping in like the learning commons. And this I, is at HPU? Yep, at HPU. And I kept hearing like people say, oh, there's someone sleeping. So I, I kind of just got up and left. And then when I was walking down Fort Street, a jolly man approached me and asked me questions and I was like, here you are, give me an internship <laughs> and now I'm here. So that jolly man was Jay Fidel, the president and founder of <laughs> Think Tech Hawaii, who was um, on our live program called Think Tech on the Street and interviewing you. Yep. 
And so you've been here for how many months now? Two months? I believe like it's around February, so two months. February, right. And you're going to be here until May. Yep. And what have you been learning as a, an intern on ThinkTech? So a lot of behind the camera stuff, like how to deal with guests mostly. Um, how I do you deal with guests? You tell them to turn off their phones and you try to get their attention while they're talking to each other, like the host and the guest. They always got their thing going on and you got your job to do, so you kind of got to cross that line between like interrupting them and doing what you have to do. So. I see. So in terms of uh, making them feel a part of the studio and the production, is that something that's new to you in terms of the human interaction? Welcome, yeah. welcome then? Uh -huh. Very new to me. Not used to touching people. Handshaking yeah. and... <laughs> Miking them up. Like I see getting that done. In terms of challenges, what, what, what else have you been doing? Do you enjoy the back, um, the equipment? And um, I understand you're particularly interested in sound. Right. There's a room in this room. There's a room next to this room where all of this is like being done. Right, the pr our production studio. The production right? studio. Right. That's crazy. Uh huh. And what I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I can't tell you about it. Why are you interested in sound? What is it about sound? Is it the equipment or is it the effect? Is it the relationship between sound and visual? Oh, I just like music. And oh, you music. like music. Okay. I've got to get that done. Okay, so long term, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to major in integrated multimedia well, at I HPU? I always jokingly say that my goal is to change my major every semester. And I wouldn't put that off as a joke, really, because I don't know what I want to do. I see. But like every experience is valuable. So like even if I do end up doing something completely different, the things that I'll learn here at an internship, like it's still valuable, and you can take that with you. Absolutely. And are you doing anything relating to media in the summer? In the summer? Yeah. Nope. Not that I know of <laughs> yet. <Nope. laughs> Okay. Well, Nicole, we have so much to talk about in terms of being a millennial. So um, how, how do millennials, and I know you don't speak for everybody, you yeah. just speak for yourself, and you're actually on the young side of the millennial spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. But what are some of the issues that have affected you that you see compared to, let's say, your parents' generation or the younger people who are coming up who are still in grade school and high school? Um, let's say in terms of cultural or uh, gender, ethnic, economic mm. issues? Well, I think especially relating it to media, the previous generation kind of like, they were already set up with their life and then more technology started coming in and they had to learn with it. And then the newer generation, they're kind of raised with it there already. And millennials are sort of in that place where it overlaps a bit where we got to experience like some of life where there wasn't too much technology going on and then just as we were growing up technology did too and like we're really as like we like leave into the adult world and then try to figure out what we're doing that's when technology is like really taking its place and being implemented more so but you're definitely of the generation where technology is you're considered a, a native Native, right? Yeah, and That's and so like. so what what tell us about what you use as a uh, what you and your friends and your your colleagues use in terms of equipment. You have a, a phone, a phone smartphone that's pretty much with you all the time. Um, Do you write on your smartphone? Do you prepare write your papers on your smartphone for, for school? A lot of people use their laptops, not really the phone, but it's definitely switching over to digital for everything. You have a phone, you have a laptop. Lots of wires, lots of wires going on in this room. Do you have a lot of social media um, relationships and contacts? Yeah. Which ones do you use? Every Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. And daily, moment, daily. Uh, hourly? I think hourly. <laughs> it's funny because we have another um, staff member who is a millennial too, but he refuses to be involved in any social media, doesn't have a Facebook page or anything. So do you see that as, 
unusual for a millennial, but most millennials like you engage very much in social media. I think whether it's social media or something else. What is the something else? Just like using internet or just basically email, searching things up. You can't really avoid it. Like it's being integrated into our lives so much that whether you're putting yourself out there publicly on social media and like allowing yourself to be contacted by other people, you're still engaging. So there's been, there's always talk that Facebook is kind of trending more toward older parents like me yeah. who are checking on my millennial son versus the millennials are moving to another platform. Do you find that the case? And if so, what, where are you moving to? Well, a lot of younger people, they definitely stay away from Facebook, I guess. They stay away from Facebook. Why? Why? It's just attention span, I think. There's definitely more things that pop out, like very graphic. Is that good or bad? Good? Like... Oh, so you're saying Facebook doesn't have as much of the graphics that you, in particular, are interested in seeing. So what would you gravitate toward? What What is some of your favorite? I think in terms of, like, you would refer to restaurant versus fast food, um, Instagram and Twitter, things that, like, limit the amount that you're posting. So Twitter has that um, character uh, limit. Character count. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram, it's basically just a photo or a video, which you can caption how you want. But I feel like those um, forms of, or those platforms are more fast food type. I like see. you consume it and you scroll, not too much. Not too much content. Like you can be like friends with so many people and never speak a word to them and still consider yourself friends and then meet up with them one day and like things will be either awkward or like completely fine. I see. So what about Snapchat? It, that's arguably not social media to a lot oh, of people because it's not really something like you can find other people's profiles without already knowing them. I see. I see. I think that's sort of what makes it different. So in terms of, um, well, that's really interesting because, again, as I said, my generation, we're using Facebook, but I personally uh, am not comfortable using Twitter. But uh, as an organization, Facebook, our goal is, of course, is to spread as much information as possible to as wide a community as possible about the many um, great shows that we have and important issues that we want to uh, discuss and, and, yeah. and let the community know And about. I feel like Facebook or those social medias where I guess you guys are saying it's for older people now they're moving towards a more professional use a lot of people use it to have their co-workers or like make make events on Facebook and like navigate through their professional world and save other things like they keep their Twitter and their Instagram private but I think definitely soon that line is going to be blurred too between social media and what's your professional and what your private life is because if even now, nothing is private, so it's a matter of when you go to an interview, what parts of yourself do you present to your boss? Like, you're not going to bring out that weird side of you. Right. So if it's all on social media anyways, what are they choosing to look at? Right. Everyone has that personal side of them, so right. Right. kind of... Okay, well, we're going to take go to a short break, Nicole, and... Uh, We'll be right back. This is my guest, Nicole Alexandra Enos, who is uh, a freshman at HPU, a millennial, and I uh, think Tech Hawaii spring intern. And we'll be right back with the Millennial Mile. Mile. Aloha! Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii with my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, every Friday from 1 to 1.30 p.m. Please join us with my good old buddy, Gordo the Texar and Andrew the Security Guy. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. How you doing? Aloha! You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may have not otherwise met, helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. You want to talk about some socially sensitive issues relevant to women? Listen to these guys. Well, I think it's important in Judaism that we don't take the Bible literally, we take it seriously. Okay. I agree. And the, really, the key to understanding Christianity is compassion. If you're compassionate towards other people, you are living a Christian life. And that relates also to dealing with women and men and women issues as well. Mm. Are women and men equal? They're equal. Who's Why better? Be Who's better? <laughs> Depends Tune on in. what. Tune in.
Welcome back. This is Carol Monley with the first show called The Millennial Mind with my guest, a millennial, our very own millennial, Nicole Alexandra Enos. Welcome back. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> you are. And you're a freshman at HPU, but I know you graduated from Campbell High School last year, right? That's absolutely correct. Right. Actually, you graduated magna cum laude. So, and you mentioned earlier in our first half that you had a very science um, background with biology and your parents' interest in promoting STEM courses. Um, but I also see that um, you really have a wide variety of volunteer work in uh, high school. I, the River of Life Soup Kitchen, AIDS Walk, Pacific Asian Affairs Council, uh, One World Now Ara Ara Arabic Leadership Class. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So I came from Campbell, uh, this big fort in Eva Beach. There's a lot of red dirt there, but there's also some extracurricular activities, which are pretty interesting. So I think the main thing I was involved with in high school was PAC, which is Pacific and Asian Affairs Council, and also OWN, which is One World Now. It was a program where we could go after school and take Arabic, which is usually not offered at all in Hawaii or in most places. So it was both, it was all kind of in, mixed together. So a lot of things we learned were Arabic leadership classes, which touched a lot on um, public speaking, interacting with others, seeing things through a global lens versus like a local lens. And, um, yeah. and, and how much Arabic did you learn? Are you fluent? No, not at all. Uh -huh. I forgot <laughs> everything I learned. <laughs> the only thing I can remember how to say is asir dajaj, which is chicken juice. I see. Something I, to drink? No, it's chicken and juice, and I oh. put it together, and that's all I remember. <laughs> I see. Yeah. But has it helped you in terms of understanding, giving you a broader background and interest in the world beyond Hawaii? Definitely. Mm -hmm. So pretty much how I said earlier, even I don't know what I'm doing yet. In the future. Yeah. So with PAC and how it, brought, I guess, broadened my vision. So you have the Asia and you have the Middle East. The Middle East. And I see you are also the Chinese Cultural Club president. Did you learn Chinese? Yidian Dian. That means small. I don't even know that. <laughs> so less than small. But I ate a lot of dim sum. Okay. So that's what counts. Okay. When you're in clubs in high school, mm -hmm. as long as you eat, you've accomplished something. <laughs> right. So, um, but that brings us to the broader issue of you now as a millennial and how uh, cultural issues and, and gender issues really affect um, your thinking and maybe what you can tell us about your friends and your your generation thinks in terms of gender and, and uh, cultural issues because as we know it's been changing over the last many decades. Yeah. Uh, while it's been changing I guess it's it's been more brought to light than changing. I feel like it's it's always been there. These people have always been there. There's always been gay people. There's always been people of color in America. But rather, like, the type of exposure, or what type of exposure the media puts. So how that. have you seen it changed? Like There's in high school, was your awareness of the issues, did it oh. change over the course of your period of time in high school? And do you see it continuing to evolve? It's just mostly like we're seeing it happen and especially in high school too, people just ignored it or every time when people are young, they will ignore the problems and then they get older and then it's like this nonstop flood of new information. Mm -hmm. so Do you find people more tolerant now? Are you part of the educational process of among your family and um, others? Mm -hmm. Do you see media as being important in helping. I think it's both divisive and also brings people together because when you acknowledge the difference they're the people who will stick to their ways and they don't want to hear it or they see the other opinion even being broadcasted as sort of a, an attack on their own opinion. So let's see now you're going to have a platform here for four weeks during the month of April. Oh no. Yes. What does that entail? Surprise. Ah. You're going to be the host of the Millennial Mind every Wednesday, reminding everybody, every Wednesday at 2 for four, four Wednesdays. 
Um, so you have the opportunity during your show to bring on any guests you want and talk about any topic you want that comes under the title of the Millennial Mind. So do you have some ideas now of what we can expect to see and if any of it reflects or um, will enlighten us on any of these issues that we've talked about? Cultural, gender, education, economic. I'm going to bring it out right now. Yes. I have nothing to say. <laughs> But I'm going to say a lot, so you got to watch out for that. Okay, do you have any guests lined up? Well, tease us. What kind of guests? The guests that I want are going to be gone. Oh. They're going to Coachella, and I'm, I'm going to try to get them still. Maybe we can do a Skype a interview. A Skype with them. interview. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely thinking about finding a straight person to interview. I think. It would be really um, insightful. Right. There's not many left, and you know, just gotta find their point of view before they're gone. Right. And to our viewers who don't know what Coachella is, can you describe that to everyone? Um, a big music festival over multiple days. Very expensive. A lot of drugs. A lot of people. A lot of sweat. And where is it? in California, right? I believe. Yeah. I'm not familiar with uh -huh. real-world events. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so your friends are going to go to it, and hopefully we will be able to... Snag some of their time. Snag some of their time. Right. Okay. And, um, but you're not going to go. You can't go. No. No. All right. Okay. What about some other guests and topics and you topics. might want to cover? What do you think our audience would be interested in? We're waiting. <laughs> you can see me in the shot. <laughs> we can see you in the shot. <laughs> but for those of us who are on our podcast, we're Put actually down. thinking out loud here of some of the topics that our new host, and did you know, Nicole, you were going to be our youngest permanent host? That's right. I'm 13. I uh, know. <laughs> what year were you actually born in? 98. Yeah. So you were still born in the last century. Right. Barely. Barely. But you were born in the last century. Okay. So, well, I won't put you on the spot any further until you want to make the big announcement as to your future guests are. Right. Okay. It's okay. a secret. It's a secret. It's not that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but mm -hmm. it's just a secret, and I'm trying to keep the, the suspense out there. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about HPU and your experience there, because it's a wonderful school right here in downtown Honolulu and beautiful waterfront front, uh, campuses and classrooms and uh, what are some of the classes you're taking besides integrated your major in, in media? As a freshman, I take pride in my schedule full of general ed classes. Very good. Yep. What are some of those classes? <laughs> Do you have a science requirement? Uh, I did that last semester, chemistry, uh -huh. so there was that. And um, um, more gen eds. In what? General education. General ed. So, okay. Something on Excel, like an art class. Uh huh. What's the art class? A sustainable art and design. Ah, tell me more, more about that. Sustainable art and design. Is that a hands-on class where you're actually using your your hands? No, we've been mostly, so far, anyways, discussing sustainability topics, environment. Mm-hmm. And design. We're getting to art. Okay, so does so. it relate to architecture and planning, city planning, environmental issues? I think a bit of that, but most of what we were going over was product design and how a lot of things are not created to be reused. And not just reused. Not, not created to be used. Reused. Oh, reused. Or like one term use, one time use. Right, disposable. Disposable. Yeah, the disposable culture. So we're looking at through sustainability yeah. and through your generation and the future of creating a more um, mm. recycled, recyclable, reusable yeah. uh, lifestyle. Yeah. It's kind of off topic, but I'm taking up time because using up time during a talk show is yeah. very vital. 
So disposable, <laughs> disposable products. Right. Um, I'm just going to start talking. Like earlier, I was having like a crisis. I was thinking of disposable things, like disposable people. Who are disposable people? I don't know. Hmm. Do you think there are any people out there who are considered disposable or who are not valued as much as they should? Oh, I think some people think that there are groups of people who are disposable. I, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't personally believe anyone is disposable. Right. Everybody has a purpose in life and is valued. But um, okay, so go ahead. You're continuing to. I'm continuing to talk about sustainability and reusable, re -re reusable. reusable. Right? Are we being used to our full potential? Are you? No, I'm not. Okay, so what would you do differently to what reuse more to your full potential? School, work, play? Uh, Are you using your mind, your body, your soul, your heart? N no, I'm not. And okay. most people do not. They just take the bus, go to work, take the bus again, get your sleep on the bus, and just juggling all that time together what parts of you are you really using yeah but i don't think that's fair because you really can't see inside someone's mind because while they're sitting on the bus bus uh, they could be creating wonderful music art writing ideas planning how can we see more into that yeah it's how a, can it's we kind see of the full them. potential of everybody yeah but is it necessary no it's not okay and your potential? I'd give it about a 3 out of 10. A 3 out of 10. Okay, right. but you're young. Yeah. Yeah. So the people around you, do you see them reaching their full potential in the next? Everyone is fluctuating where they need to be. Right. Right. So is it part of your goal in 2017 to maximize your full potential? Actually, no. No, why not? I'm going to relax. You're going to relax, okay. Yes. So it's part of the Think Tech internship relaxing. It's very relaxing. Good. But you're learning. Something. Right. And you're actually being very helpful to Think Tech. Thank you. Yeah, so it's actually a very win-win relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I can see that we're winding down. So now you have the opportunity to look right into camera two and tell again our viewers Something about your upcoming show. Wednesday, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, Millennial Mind, Nicole Alexandra Enos. Suite 888, Pioneer Plaza. Watch and find out.